Welcome to part one of our two-part series, The Auroras, A Cosmic Splendor Across the Night Sky. Our precious planet manifests countless spectacular events every day. The auroras, or northern and southern lights, are such examples and are among the most majestic cosmic splendors ever witnessed. A few hours after the night falls, and when the occasion is right, translucent clouds of lime green, purple, and golden colors can brighten up the entire polar skies. These glowing lights dance and flow constantly in the shapes of curtains, arcs, and rivers. At one moment, they are hardly perceptible. At the next moment, they shine vividly, forming breathtaking celestial panoramas. American science writer Louis Young compares them to a fire light flickering on the ceilings of the world. Scottish poet David Vedder calls them the rush of 10,000 thousand rainbows. The northern lights are called the Aurora Borealis and the southern lights the Aurora Australis. Usually, people living close to the Earth's poles have a better opportunity to see the auroras and those who live close to the equator will need to travel to see their spectacular display. That was what TV host Charles Woolley did. To bring auroras to his 60 Minutes Australia show, he traveled to Norway to have a date with the diva of Northern Lights. On the night of my first date with the diva, I was stood up. She was a no-show. It's the first time I've ever seen anyone dig a hole in the snow in order to light a fire. <laughs> It's 20 degrees below, but no one's going to let a Northern Lights opportunity pass. So in fact, you're telling me that the Northern Lights are always there, it's just we can't see them. Absolutely. So every single day the Northern Light Oval is around the polar region. And here in Norway we are far north, so we'll always see it as soon as it's clear. But soon our attention was taken from the fire on the ground to the fire overhead. It is simply staggering how quickly the northern lights can, as if by magic, start raging across the sky. What a night. My date with the diva was unforgettable. Auroras have been a theme in human history for millennia. The first depiction of the aurora dates to around 30,000 BC in the cave of Rufignac in France, where a ceiling painting depicts the bright swirling patterns of the aurora. The first textual record of the aurora was written in 2600 BC in China, noting that Fu Pao, the mother of the yellow emperor Xuan Yuan, saw intense lightning moving around the northern dipper. It illuminated the whole area. In 1619, Italian astronomer and physicist Galileo Galilei coined the term Aurora Borealis after the Roman goddess of the dawn. Long before him, the auroras had inspired a diverse collection of myths, legends, and arts. For some, the lights carry particular spiritual relevance even today. Many Swedes thought that the Northern Lights were a gift from the gods, providing light and warmth from a volcano to the north. 
Some thought they would herald a good harvest in the coming year, the belief held by native communities in Finland that the lights were caused by a celestial firefox which ran so fast across the snow that its tail kicked up sparks into the night sky to shimmer in the aurora. The Finnish word for the northern lights, revontule, literally means firefox. For some indigenous cultures, the lights mark a special visit. They represent our ancestors. Those that have left us, uh, they went home. Uh, so those are spirits. Uh, that's why we say, Kanimito, check the spirits are dancing. For thousands of years, the smartest among humans could only guess the source of the lights. This drawing of 1570 AD envisioned the northern lights as huge candles in the sky burning beautifully above the clouds and the stars. What charming visualization! In 1790, English natural philosopher and scientist Henry Cavendish developed a method of making quantifiable observations of the aurora. Known for accuracy and precision in his research on the composition of the air and density of the Earth, Cavendish used the triangulation technique to determine that the aurora is produced in the upper atmosphere about 100 to 130 kilometers in altitude or 60 miles above Earth's surface. He was basically correct. Although today we know that the aurora can occur as high as 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles above the Earth. The celestial display of auroras during the past centuries inspired great fascination among scientists and nature explorers. According to modern science, all auroras begin with solar activity. As this NASA video explains, several billion tons of plasma are hurled out from the sun when the solar storm occurs. The solar storm can reach speeds over 8 million kilometers an hour. After 18 hours, the solar storm reaches Earth. When the solar storm reaches our planet, something strange happens. An invisible shield, the Earth's magnetic field, deflects the storm. The magnetic fields couple together and create a funnel where the gas streams down on the daylight side of the pole. This is the daylight aurora. The magnetic fields stretch further back and couple together. The magnetic rubber band breaks and gas from the solar storm streams along the magnetic lines towards the poles on the night side. This is the nighttime aurora. The foundation of the current understanding of the aurora was first laid at the beginning of the 20th century thanks to Norwegian scientist Christian Birkeland. A professor of physics at the University of Oslo, Birkeland led several expeditions to the Arctic Circle. He and his team braved the fierce polar winters to collect magnetic field data Finally, the cause of the Northern Lights was discovered. Christian Birkeland, he had a theory that was a charged particle from the sun that was sparking the Northern Lights. Of course, nobody believed him. And he had to make his own experiment to try to prove his own theory. So he made this Terrell experiment, a very famous experiment. It's a vacuum chamber. He pumped up all the air and he put the earth inside there in metal sphere and the magnet inside there again and bombarded it with particles, electrons actually three years before they knew the electrons existed. But he managed to create the artificial aurora you can see here. And this is actually his original box that's still in Oslo at the, University, at the Technical Museum. He also saw it was similar lights on the southern hemisphere. 
it would take another 60 years for the world to acknowledge the importance of Berkeley's work. His incredible discoveries have been forever immortalized on the Norwegian 200 kroner banknote. And you all see in the picture of Christian Beckland because he's on this bill. And the whole story about the Northern Lights, you can see here, the Northern Lights behind his head, the Big Dipper, the Pole Star in the right position, the ice crystal because we have climate here, and the Terrell experiment. And the other side, you can see a map, and it shows actually uh, the Arctic region. You can see the magnetic pole, and around the magnetic pole, you will see the Northern Light Oval and the Beckland current to the right. vegan to save the most endangered species, namely humans. Thank you, noble viewers, for being with us today. 